those of you hoping that the Netflix Witcher TV series would be based on the books and not the video games, this is a good day for you. For those that wanted the opposite, a not so great day for you. The Witcher series is coming to Netflix and I am both really excited but also really terrified because Netflix releases all their episodes at once which means I have to binge watch, which means I have to stay in one location for a long time. I don't like binge watching things, so I'm not too excited about that. But we got some really good interviews, not only from the show runner Lorne Hisrich, but other people that are in the show, like Henry Cavell and people that worked on the show. So first, I want to talk about Lauren, the showrunner who addressed the Witcher books and what this show is. So she shared, The books of Andrei Sepkowski will always be there. The games too. So this show is the third version of the story. The goal for me was to recreate the soul of the books, to recreate these characters I fell in love with, while putting them in a new coherent structure to build a story that makes sense, to create a work that brings something more. We didn't imagine our show book after book, and that's exciting. We have a particular approach on The Witcher, relatively unexpected, I think, like the fact that Geralt and Ciri meet already in the first season. We wanted to have a fresh look on this story. All amateurs will be satisfied in every episode. I, for one, enjoy when people take source material and build an alternate world out of it or a different version of events, so I think from other interviews and what Lauren has said that they are going to be faithful to the books, but they're putting their own little surprises in there, twists in there to keep us entertained. It's just not a beat-by-beat beat retelling. I like that. I know not everyone's going to agree, and that's fine. The costume designer also supported that this series doesn't follow the video games, so he said, We copied nothing from the games, because the show is not an adaptation of the games, but the books. Also, some costumes from the games would not have the same effect in real life. So we search for our own thing, something that fits Lauren's writing. And I know that makes some people nervous, but I think the really great thing is the author of The Witcher books himself has given his blessing to the Witcher Netflix TV series because we know he does not like the video games, but he actually seems to really approve of the TV show. So Lauren shared this about meeting with the author. I met him in Poland in April 2018. Of course, I talked about my view on his story before starting anything. He is really happy of this version, and he is okay with the story we want to tell. Again, I find that really reassuring, especially <laughs> with him, who he is very vocal when he does not like an adaptation of his story, so... I don't know, a little more helpful. If you were worried about this show being a CGI nightmare, I know I complain a, a lot about CGI. Mostly just the insane battles that are just too much. It's just too much my eyes glaze over. Well, we're not gonna have a huge CGI mess in this show. So we were told, Personally, I don't want to see the actor play in front of a green screen, talking to a green ball. We wanted something real, even during fighting sequences. Now the audience knows when it's CGI, and it can disconnect some of the watchers from the narrative. And the problem is, if you make excellent CGI in one scene, you have to keep the same level of quality for all the others. They went with a lot of practical effects, including lighting hundreds of candles a day for the chandeliers to have the right effect, so that's also pretty cool. I'm just, I don't know if you can tell, excited in general for the, the Witcher Netflix TV series. Now Lauren also said something I really like. She cares about what the fans of the Witcher universe wants, and she wants us to be happy, but she's not going to sacrifice the quality of the show to please everyone. So on that she said, it's always great to write something that interests so many people, but we also keep in mind that this passion is not always beneficial. It can go in a total opposite of your vision. So I wanted to debate on Twitter with some fans. Henry Cavell touched a little bit on this as well, talking about the pressure of playing such a beloved character, saying, I try not to pressure me in my career. I try not to give too much importance to that, particularly because if I worry too much of what people will think of it, it can have consequences on my performance as an actor. 
and because Geralt is someone who doesn't really feel the pressure. He also talked about his wig and his outfit, and I don't know if you remember the first test run with his wig that everybody just mocked him. Well, I guess after they fixed it a bit, of course, and made it look better, he liked his new wig and costume a lot. I love to wear this costume and this wig. I had to get used to it at first. It was a bit uncomfortable, but then I forgot about it completely. Each morning when I put them on me, I go one step further to the embodiment of the character. It allows me to slip into the shoes of Geralt. Lauren backed this up saying that Henry was in his Geralt wig so much that when she would see him with his normal black hair, it would actually be weird for her. Also, always great to hear, again, Henry talked about how much of a Witcher fan he is, saying, I discovered the games, then I discovered the books, and the universe of The Witcher instantly meant something to me. I often thought about playing Geralt. When the opportunity appeared, I didn't let the chance pass me. I asked my agent to make me meet Lauren as soon as possible. I didn't even have the need to prepare myself for the role. Because I breathe, I live this universe every day. I already got numerous opportunities to think about this character while I was playing the games. My preparation was already made before the casting started. And if you've read some of the other interviews with Lauren, she talked about how Henry called her and wanted the role. And she was like, dude, I'm, I'm not even casting at this point. Like this is very beginning stages. And it's just really cute that he went out of his way because he really wanted to play this character. I know Henry gets a lot of hate, I like him, I find him to be a good actor, but that doesn't seem to be the popular opinion. But he just seems like this huge nerd who's really talented and, and also really handsome. But yeah, I don't know, I really like him and I'm really excited to see him as Geralt. Lastly, there was of course discussion on how the Witcher TV series is not a Game of Thrones ripoff, which for the millionth time, <laughs> The Witcher universe was created many, many years before George wrote his first A Song of Ice and Fire book, so I don't understand the Game of Thrones ripoff thing. That's just, it's weird. It's like people just can't Google things and see, oh, the Witcher universe was created a long time before the A Song of Ice and Fire universe. Yikes. So production designer Andrew Lulls came out and said, yeah, this isn't a Game of Thrones ripoff, stating, We are not the poor cousin of Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings. The Witcher has its own universe, and even if some elements are common with the mentioned works, but it's because it's the genre. They allowed the audience to understand the fantasy worlds, to imagine universes. It was not really the case before. Today, they know how to read between the lines, so we can insinuate without necessarily showing everything. If there wasn't a lack of budget at all, Netflix gave us wildly enough. We staged some huge sequences. We were able to give our show a production value worthy of cinema. And if you notice, there's a lot of people that worked on the Witcher TV series for Netflix that keep saying this isn't a Game of Thrones ripoff, but you see all these headlines of the new Game of Thrones for everything, and it's just stop. Stop. Although super exciting about how much money Netflix threw at them to make a really awesome show. Lauren also talked about the graphic, more violent nature of the show and how there's a lot more darker themes. The show is brutal in so many ways, but there's no permanent graphic violence. Nothing is gratuitous in what we show. However, we're not afraid to talk about adult themes, like in the books. Racism, sexism, moral and physical violence, clearly it's not a show for kids. Which is a, a very common thing for people to say. Fantasy and sci-fi is for kids. And I'm like, dude, have you read some fantasy sci-fi books? That's, that genre is just not for kids. At all. So there's your latest Witcher news. What do you think about all this? How pumped are you for the Witcher series? Like, subscribe, and let me know in the comment section down below.